I'm pretty sure when he stepped on the gas, sending the beat-up old Camaro recklessly careening forward, that that was when his drugs kicked in. But maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here. A little background info could be required to make sense of all this. I'm trying to tell the story of the first night I ever realized how truly happy I was to be alive. This realization first hit me in early 1987 in the fine city of Madison, Wisconsin, home of the Wisconsin Badgers and a very jumping music town at the time. The band I was drumming for was on the road, touring as the opening act to a group we knew from New York City, and we were taking our shot at the proverbial big time. Night after night, dingy club after dingy club, we played our hearts out, amassing adventures that would burn inside of us for all our days. Each night, we played with a fire and intensity that was required of the angry young men we were at the time. Each night, we won new converts over, one at a time, building a small career that seemed to us like giant steps on the steady road towards fame and fortune. Town after town, we followed the other band in our used Chrysler van that possessed a roar so intimidating that it was affectionately known to us as The Beast. After we'd finished setting up our equipment for the show later in the evening, we'd usually hang around the venue for a while to see if there was someone whose floor we could use for a place to sleep that night. Many a morning I woke up with my face buried in the cheap, dirty shag carpet of someone's temporary college apartment, or sometimes even in the back of the beast. You can learn many things through the extreme experience of low-budget rock and roll touring. I learned that it's better to sleep in a dirty van than it is to sleep on a dirty street. I learned creative ways to stretch $3 to last a week if I had to. And I learned that no matter what costumes or personal markings anyone wears, people everywhere are all the same, with each of us just looking for love. Anyway, we had managed through a friend of a friend to find a place to stay in the university area of Madison, which was the umpteenth stop on this tour. The shows were easy enough with us playing 45 minutes a night, which is the opening act gig. It didn't bother us. We would usually do two to three hours back home, so comparatively, this tour was a piece of cake. Our roadie at the time was a guy we called the Turge, which was a shortened version of his last name, Turgeon. He was a rough-hewn, charismatic fellow who had been the, quote, singer, unquote, of his own local punk band back in the day, and he possessed a magnetic air about him that pretty much made everyone he didn't scare his friend. That, coupled with his ability to drive long stretches without falling asleep, seemed like fine reasons for us to bring him on the road. After we went to check out the place we were staying in Madison, we went to the van in order to leave for the show and discovered that the beast had a flat tire. We were running late, and this was not good. None of us had a credit card, much less any money. We were waiting to get paid that night in order to get gas for the drive to the next town as well as something to eat. We were in a dire situation. Fortunately, or so it seemed, a couple of guys who lived next door to the house we were staying happened to drive up next to us in an old, once bitchin' Camaro with a patchy paint job and several generous dents. In their slurred vocabulary, they offered us a ride which we were hard-pressed to refuse. After all, we were late, we needed to eat, and now we had to buy a new tire as well. There was also a small rainstorm just starting to burst, beginning to drench three helpless musicians and their humble manservant stranded in a strange town so far from home. So, the four of us piled sardine-like in the back of this Burt Reynolds reject mobile, looking only to make the two miles to our gig. At that moment, I saw the driver look at his friend in the passenger seat, open his eyes wide, and start laughing in a maniacally muted manner, to which his buddy laughed back in the exact same way, in recognition. All right, they both said as they smiled and nodded. It's kicking in. Just then, the driver slammed his foot as hard as he could on the accelerator, and all of a sudden I felt the four of us bullet towards the back seat of this tin can as these two idiots raced down the residential streets of Madison, Wisconsin at insanely high rates of speed. Now, zooming the wrong way down one-way streets and doing unintentional 360s in the middle of the main town road in the rain seemed to me to be an undesirable way to die. But the thing I remember most is the other two band members screaming at the top of their lungs, me wide-eyed and completely silent, and the Turge laughing like a man willing not only to meet his maker, but to imbue him with some choice words. The driver and his accomplice laughed like small insane children as we flew through a school zone, spun around helplessly at a red light intersection, and bounced off of automobile after automobile. It was the one moment in my life so far that I was actually paralyzed with a sense of my own immediate mortality. 
so many thoughts flew through my head as we barraged down street after street, the rain inspiring these two fools to neither slow down nor use windshield wipers. Then, after we crashed into a median dividing the road, our bass player noticed that the club we were playing was right across the street from where we had landed and yelled, Let us out! Now! I thought you guys wanted a ride to the club, man, said our wasted foe Mario Andretti. The club is right across the street. Just let us out. Oh, replied our driver as he glanced through his mental haze at the venue lights staring right at him. So it is. Foe Mario then turned back to his buddy in the passenger seat, nodding and laughing in the unintelligible language they shared as we scrambled desperately to get out of that death trap as fast as we possibly could. When we finally managed to escape, the three of us were pretty shaken, slowly crossing the street and making it to the show by the skin of our teeth. The Turge, however, thanked our hosts for the, quote, awesome ride, unquote, and offered them free tickets to the show, which they thankfully refused before flying down the street and out of sight, laughing and hooting as loud as they could through the cold, rainy roads of Madison, Wisconsin. Our show was a bit hesitant at first, with the three of us playing like boys who had just been confronted by the edge of the precipice of our lives and had been utterly unprepared for it. Then, out of the blue, a thought shot through my head more volumatic to me than any of the cacophonous noise we were making on stage. Do you realize that you could have died tonight? The voice asked me in bold tones in the front of my mind. Oh yeah, yes I do, I answered timidly. Well then. Are you glad that you're still alive? You bet I am, I said to myself with a slight bit more authority in my mental voice. Then, the voice said with a deafening razor-sharp clarity, play like it. It hit me with a sharp sting, like a slap in the face. It all made sense. For whatever reason, I had been given a second chance. I'm not sure why, but here I was. The hilarity of it all flowed over me like a cool rain, and I couldn't decide if I was either going to laugh or cry, but I knew that I had to give it my all that night. I stopped the song we were playing and announced to the crowd that we'd almost been killed that evening, which startled the audience because that wasn't something you normally heard at a rock show. I told the story of our heinous journey to the venue and how I felt we were going to die at any minute. Then I said, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about all of you, but tonight I, for one, I'm glad to be alive. Then, I played my drums like my life depended on it. Because it does depend on it. I love what I do. And I love being able to do it. And if that means doing it in a small club on a rainy night in Madison, Wisconsin, then so be it. Do what you love. Love what you do. Tomorrow is not a guarantee, and yesterday is just a dream. This moment, this moment is all that we have. And as I write this, some 15 years later, somewhere in Missouri with another band, facing yet another small club on yet another cold and rainy night, I know with all of my heart and all of my soul, with the very core of who I am, that I am still indeed very glad to be alive. <laughs>